Good evening. I want to welcome you to the Columbia County Board of Commissioners June 15th meeting. Call the meeting to order, and I'm going to ask uh, Vice Chairman Richardson for an invocation. You would bow your head with me. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you for this day. And Lord, thank you for the many blessings that you bestowed on this land. Thank you for the life. Thank you for the men and women that have served so bravely to give us and ensure that we keep. Giving us these freedoms. Ask you to watch over wonders and Lord keep them safe. Thank you for the way that we have in this wonderful county. Lord, we just ask you to keep them safe as they go. Lord, we ask you to be with us, give us wisdom, give us guidance, visions that are all these things I pray in the precious name. Amen. Please stand for the place. Let the record show we have four, five commissioners present. Quorum. Gentlemen, you have the minutes from the April 1st regular session in your package. Approval, I'll accept the motion. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. We also have the minutes from the executive session. First, same request. Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Do we have two items to add to the agenda, Mr. Johnson? Yes, Mr. Chairman, first one being an appointment to the Planning Commission, I-3A and I-3B will be an intergovernment agreement uh, with the City of Harlem. Added. I just want to welcome everyone here this evening. <coughs> Hopefully we'll uh, get through our agenda quickly, but it could be a long meeting. I'll go straight to the presentations. Uh, could I ask Ms. Annie Anderson to come up and speak about the maintenance? Anderson, maintenance of a ditch. Take your time. That wireless mic. I'm sorry. Wait. I locked my buggy so it won't roll away from me. <clears throat> Ms. Anderson, could you uh, just state your name and address for the record, please? Annie Anderson, 114 Shaw Street, Martins, Georgia. Thank you, ma'am. Floor is yours. And what? Uh, go ahead. You wanted to speak about the maintenance of a ditch. Oh, I can talk now? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. All right, I thank you, men, for letting me come. And my problem is, down on my property, there is a big ditch that has grown up with bushes, trees, whatever you have, say so. And of course now, right now, last year, this ditch filled with mosquitoes and sand gnats. I'm sure some of you have talked to Trey Allen, who came down and was nearly eat up with them come out scratching like a dog. <laughs> okay, this year, Don Skinner came the other day. He went down with my neighbor, Chad, and I saw him fanning like this when he came out from the ditch. 
Okay, I asked Chad. I said, Chad, was the mosquitoes in the sand gnats down there? Yes, ma'am. And so that ditch I'm asking y'all to have cleaned out and something sprayed down there. County was supposed to when they put the tent in. Ma'am, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So the, the last thing you said. County was, I, I apologize, I didn't hear you. Oh, I just said the county was supposed to keep it cleaned out. Yes, ma'am, and, and I've seen the paperwork. There was a 60-day easement signed, like, in 2000, signed by you, your husband, all the neighbors, and it gave us 60 days to do work. But that easement ended yes. 60 days later, 21 years ago. I don't understand what you're saying. It's not the county's property, and we don't have the right to be there. What do you mean I don't have the right to be no, there? No, ma'am, we not don't, you. we don't, not you, ma'am, we don't have the right to be there. No, you don't have a right to be there. Do you know what? You get a temporary easement because the county did not get an easement because Scott Godifer, I don't know whether any of y'all remember him, I am 92 years old, so I know all of these guys from way back. Okay. Scott got off of moved the ditch over, made the debris with the county. And so, if anything is not done, it's not my fault. Because you do have a right to come on the property, and you were supposed to do it. The county is supposed to do it. Matt, do you want to share what you... Did, yes, I, I just provided a copy to Miss Anderson. It was a temporary easement that was assigned to the county, and it was clearly stated out that the both parties agreed to this continuing it until December 31st of 2000. So, it, it, January 1 of 2001, we lost all rights to access that ditch. It was a temporary easement, and it was signed by Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Anderson. Well, not what date it was actually signed, but it does say it expires December 31st of 2000. Signed on the first day of November 2000. That's what we have in our records. Did you what? This, this is what we have in our records, that it, it expired on December 31st. Expired. The easement, the, the, the permission you gave us to be on your property expired in 2000. Are you kidding? <laughs> No, ma'am, that's, that's what it says. All right, listen. They have, if they've ever come back on it since then, it was very seldom. And now they were to keep that ditch clean. I have papers on it. <clears throat> I have records on it. And if you want to see them, you just... It would be very helpful. If you have anything, this, this is the only thing we were able to find. The clerk and I went I through know, it a long time. I know. And you know what? When they got through, they wanted a 32-foot ease, I mean a 30-foot on one end of my property and 20 on the other because Prada, big guy, I'm small potatoes in the county. And that's what Barry Pascal wrote. I've still got the write-ups from way back. But, you know, we're the little folks. And Prada was a big guy. Okay, he was on the other side of the ditch. They were supposed to get an easement. And they never got an easement. Because Scott Dodderford said they needed a 20-foot easement, I said, okay, I'll get 10. You feel I'll give 10? Trotter. Okay, they let Trotter feel right down on the ditch. And a bank. I've got some pictures somewhere. But anyway, it shows the bank. They let Trotter build up. That's the road that goes into the post office. Okay, you know all those businesses along there. He was building them at that time. Okay, they did not get a 10-foot easement from Trotter. So therefore, they never come back to me. Get a 10 I would have given them a 10 and 
And I'll still give them a 10. But what they wanted when they got through with it was they said, Ms. Anderson, we can't get an easement from Mr. Trotter. We need 20 feet on one end of your property and 30 feet on the other end of the property. Now, by nobody's book, I don't care who it is, that's not right. And I said, you know, you came down here and sit at my table. I was not going to sign that easement. Give y'all 20 foot on one end and 30 on the other. I will give a temporary easement whenever you want it. That's what I've done throughout the years. So that's the way the thing goes. The paperwork you have, I'd love to see. Yeah, I would suggest we well, get see what paperwork she has and see what we can do about it. Okay. We'll get with you and get that paperwork from you. What? We'll get with you and get that paperwork you have so we can look through it to make sure we, we have all our, our documents in order. So I have somebody come out and get those from you. Ah, uh, well, I don't know how if you're saying, but I guess it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't trust him. He went to Clemson. <laughs> hey, you're supposed to look, no, you're not supposed to look at that. Uh, Chad and Cooper Clyde, my neighbors, they made, went down and made those pictures so y'all could see that mess in that deal. Thank you very much. Okay, is that all? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. All right, thanks. Y'all look at those pictures now that's going around. Chad and uh, Cooper. Careful. Made them yesterday. You hold them. We got them. He's got them up there. All right, thanks. Thanks, Thank Ms. You. Anderson. Right, there are other folks who have asked to speak, but they're on specific issues that are on our agenda, so I'm going to wait till we get to that issue and then ask you to speak. Commissioners, you have next the consent agenda, which is a group of items that have been through committee and received the necessary votes to be placed on a consent agenda. So if they still meet with your approval, I'll accept one, um, one motion and one vote to do so. Make a motion to approve. Second. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Straight to the uh, first thing on unfinished business, public works. Vice Chairman Richardson. Yes, sir. I make a motion to approve the second reading of resolution 21-23, Streetlight District 531, Eagle Creek, 21-24, Streetlight District. 516B Brigadier Landing Phase 2 to establish streetlight districts and authorize Georgia Power to proceed with the installation per their proposal. Second. Matt. So this is a request we received from the uh, the neighborhoods for these uh, streetlight districts. Petitions uh, have been filed. If this is approved, we will notify Georgia Power to get started on this. We'll get them installed as quick as they can. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Carries. I make a motion to approve the second reading of Resolution 21-25, Adoption of Utility Permitting Fee. Second. There are fees paid by companies such as AT&T, Comcast. Um, wow. When they're putting in new lines in our right-of-way, these fees will cover the cost of our inspectors, our plan reviewers going out and, and inspecting those jobs. Been a lot more of that here lately. It's taking a lot more time to get those things done. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Commissioner Skinner. Okay, Mr. Chair, I, uh, item A1, I make a motion to approve resolution 2117, adopting an annual budget for all funds of Columbia County, Georgia for fiscal year 2021-2022. Ms. Second, sir. Johnson, you want to? Yes, Mr. Chairman, just briefly, I know we've been through lots of meetings on this. Uh, as you know, we go through our annual budget process with all the division directors and elected officials. I'd like to thank everybody for their participation and, and the commissioners as we worked our way through this budget this year. Uh, the process has been going on since January. 
No, we are pleased to present you a balanced budget tonight for the fiscal year 21-22. Uh, just a couple of highlights of this budget. Uh, you will see that, that the budget is up 8.68% uh, uh, from FY 2021, including the, the uh, necessary contingency there. Uh, the addition to the budget is basically due to uh, 19 new positions in the general fund uh, and uh, some reclassifications as well. I would like to point out that the capital actually decreased by 6% uh, this year over last year. Uh, and the way we were able to do that is, is with the growth in Columbia County and the growth in the digest. We have balanced this budget using the 3% increase in property tax revenues, uh, but we are seeing additional growth in the digest. And now that we're presenting you with a balanced budget, I feel very certain that the county is going to be uh, coming back and this board is going to be taking up a matter to actually uh, roll back the millage rate when we have the, that, the millage rate hearing. So it's a good thing to be able to reduce property taxes where we can. That's been the directive we've had from this board. Uh, probably the biggest thing in this budget is, is the, uh, the new salary matrix. Uh, we have addressed that. There's been a lot of discussion about that. I'll be glad to answer any questions about that, but it is included uh, in this budget. And uh, also we have been the recipient of an increase in, in local option sales tax. Uh, so we have uh, budgeted that, but we have budgeted that uh, to be conservative. Uh, so we, we are not overestimating any of those revenues. Uh, so with that, um, the again, the staff recommends approval uh, of of the budget as the motion has been stated, and I'll answer any questions that anybody may have. How does it position us in terms of law enforcement pay? So with the new salary matrix, this will actually put us in a position where we're actually paying our uh, new entry-level law enforcement and our entry-level firefighters uh, near the very top of the of the salaries of our benchmark counties, which is uh, has, has been quite some time since we've since we've been there and unfortunately we've lost some of our public safety folks to other agencies but i think this is going to going to keep those folks and some folks in other departments as well uh in columbia county we have a significant investment in their training i do want to compliment the board on focus on investing in law enforcement because that's important in columbia absolutely can you share with the people a number of positions that the sheriff actually is that he is down. Yeah, so we, when we started working on the budget, I believe the last budget hearing we had, we were close to 30. The sheriff has been able to fill some of those positions, and we've had a couple that have, that have left uh, between there. So it's probably seven or eight positions right now. Um, but still having a problem getting applications, still, still not, we're not at full capacity. Uh, same thing with the fire department. You know, I think that's another issue is, you know, when we advertise a, a, a fire department job, need a job, or you need, need a firefighter, you know, having one and two applications for firefighter is just just not where we need to be. Uh, not 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 as much as this commission cares about public safety in this county. Also, also, Mr. Johnson, on filling other positions throughout the county, I think uh, we discussed at uh, committee last week at what our uh, amount of, of funds that were uh, where we hadn't approved. Or, or have been able to hire people or whatever. I think that number we, we our target is three fifty or something savings, and we're we were approaching a million dollars. It was over. It's over a million dollars. So yes, yes. So we budget three hundred fifty thousand dollars each year in salary savings, just as a target. Uh, it helps us balance the budget. But this year that number was over a million dollars uh, in actual salary savings to the county, uh, and and that's a good thing because that's that's budgeted money that's not being spent that goes back into fund balance. It allows us to. Um, you know, be able to be conservative with budgets going forward. But when you need a certain number of workers to be able to execute the mission of the county, it's not a good thing. Um, we're, we're already leading our benchmark counties in the number of county employees per citizen in ratio. So we have the lowest number of employees per citizen of, or the, the best ratio of, of, of county employees to citizen of anybody in our benchmark studies. Um, so we're already working with a skeleton crew, and when you're, you know, only have maybe one or two in a department, and then you're short one in that department, it becomes very difficult to carry on the business of the people. We feel confident that this new uh, salary matrix will get us to where we can get people and and qualify people. And in private in, private industry out there is uh, really fighting and, and 
not getting applicants safe to say I, I do think that's safe to say i think not only is it going to allow us to get qualified people but i think probably more important to me right now is going to allow us to keep our qualified people and that's what i'm really concerned about is is losing people that we've invested so much in because everybody is the job market is so competitive uh, so this definitely puts us on par to be to be fair and and let me just say this is not while this is a, a sweeping change in our salary matrix uh, and, and it's and it's an aggressive move this is not some overspending of money there's been a lot of analysis that have gone on this a lot of comparisons to benchmark counties to our neighbors um, it's and, and we were very careful to make sure that we uh, applied the the bulk of the of the raises in the salary matrix to the positions that were making less than fifty thousand dollars a year, not to those making more. Um, we had to we had to address everybody, but we were able to roll in everything this year to include any cost of living raise that this board was going to give. Um, we included that in this budget, so everybody was affected, but really affected were the people at the entry level positions. Questions, comments? I appreciate your input and what you do in your private sector and how, you know, explaining to us how tough it is out there to find people to fill these jobs and filters through everybody. So thank you for that input and, and letting us know that this was really a need that we needed to address. To Only if we want to keep the grass cut. <laughs> and the fires put out the and the deputies responding to calls and... Yeah, lots, lots of other things, lots of other county activities. So there's a motion and a second on the floor. Any other discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. When, when will we vote on the uh, trade? August? August. Uh, August, Leanne? End, end of July. It has to be done before mid-August because we have to deliver that. So end of July, Mr. Can, Chairman. Can I, can I say something right now? Sure. I mean, we've got a good crowd and whatever. Uh, Hopefully we'll be able to do a tax rollback, but everybody needs to remember uh, how values are coming in and, and when a house goes on, on the market and you have six or eight people bidding on it and, and paying way over the asking price, that does affect the basis that, <laughs> that we're taxing on. So if we roll back, still remember that your value's up. So. That's right. That's right. It's sad in that. <laughs> Next item, I believe there are a couple of people who want to speak. Tommy McBride. This is about a conditional use for a daycare. Following Wells Road. Mr. Chairman, gentlemen, I'm Ed Stonaker, and I feel I'm at disadvantage following Ms. Anderson. God, I can be quite a persuasive with that lady, but I, I'll do the best I can. As Tom, you, as Tom, Tommy McBride is who we asked to speak. Okay, fair enough. And I will be very brief, because I understand the five-minute limit, and I would ask if you would to hear from Ms. Ray and also Mr. McBride. Sure. Uh, basically, what we're seeking here, uh, Ms. Ray has run a child care center across from Abilene Church for the last seven years. Uh, she has a quite extensive waiting list. She has wants to serve more people. Talked to, to Mr. McBride, and she's found at 208 uh, Flowing Wells Road, a facility that will, will suit her to expand an additional facility and that that's what she is asking you know this board to do this commission to approve her to have up to 57 children in that facility we have presented to the commission uh, gave it to miss crawley a, a copy of the plat of the 208 flowing wells road that shows entrances both from brockwood and from flowing wells and we also tommy went a step further and he had a traffic study from Mr. Cassells that he rendered an opinion on, and we presented that. But I would really, I would ask the commission if they would really hear from Ms. Mishanda Blunt Ray, who is the owner and who is the operator, and who is really the lady who is seeking this exception. This is Ms. Ray. Next. So, one up, Ms. Ray. <clears throat> Oh, I'm sorry. State your name and address for the record, please. Thank you, please. I am very nervous. Don't be nervous. I understand. Here's the fool out of me sometimes. <laughs> 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 the 
forgive me. Um, I had a nice speech written out for you guys. Um, hello, my name is Mashonda Blunt Ray. I have lived in Columbia County since 2005. I have four children. Three of them have attended Westmont Elementary, Columbia Middle El um, School, and all graduated from Evans High School. Those three children have pursued careers in the fire department as a firefighter woman and EMT. The second one has a career in the United States Army, and my third child is a computer website designer. My fourth child attends Evans Elementary, an upcoming fourth grader, and is on AB honor roll. I have been married to the same person for 24 years. That was a joke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have ran a successfully family-owned daycare business in Columbia County since 2014. We currently have a two-star rating out of three stars that is required from the state of Georgia, which means that I have been above two levels that is required from the state of Georgia. Um, we provide quality care for um, children ages six weeks to the age of 12 years old. Our child care is diversified and has all ethnicities and serves all parents as well and staff. Um, many of my parents don't have the traditional nine to five shifts, so my facility um, provides them to work and gain employment and not worry about the time um, if they can't work nine to five. Some of my parents are first responders, club car associates, John Deere associates, Amazon builders and contractors, Walmart associates, law assistants, dental assistants, I have pharmacists, foster parents, grandparents that have full-time jobs and are raising their grandchildren, which is very emotional for me. And some are pursuing higher education at night, which are the younger college students that don't have their parents to watch their children for them when they go to school. Columbia County is expanding at a rate that is impacting my business. With more parents returning to work, I receive at least five to 10 calls a day for care. We have a waiting list and don't have a high turnover rate for childcare slots. I looked at 2008 Flo and Wells Road and it, meant, and it met all the requirements that I was looking for. I have looked at many buildings, but a lot are not suited for child care in Columbia County, per um, Fire Marshal um, Code Brian. Um, <laughs> Flo and Wells gave me more space. It has two entrances, one on Flo and Wells Road and one on Brookwood Road. It has 10 parking spaces with the room to add more. It, We'll also add at least seven more jobs to the seven I have already created for this community. We also have a site that accepts CAPS for parents that can't afford to pay for full childcare rates. We donate back to this community with coats for kids in the winter. We do Valentine's Day cards for veterans and current servicemen and women and first aid responders. We give backpacks to all the children that turn, attending our facility that goes into the elementary school systems in Columbia County. I just wanted to add it that I enjoy what I do. I'm very passionate and that's it. That's who I am. Appreciate your uh, words. I appreciate everything you do for the community. Uh, I had a, you have to follow code, state code and county code. And so I personally only had one question. In an email you sent to the county, you said you have 100 square feet of outside activity space per child by code and state law, correct me if I'm wrong. And so you said you only had 260 feet square feet of space, and maybe it was a typo, but you wouldn't be able to provide 57 children a big piece of land to be able to prov legally provide what's required for them to be outside and play. So are you saying that the bank space that we're offering for the play area is not sufficient? Uh, you responded in the email back on the end of May and okay. said that it was like 260 square feet. That's a typo. Okay. I mean, 57 kids, that's a lot of space. And um, you wouldn't start it down this path. You wouldn't pass the codes and inspections. Um, if you were going to have that many kids in the kind of space it was required. Well, generally during the daycare, all the children don't go outside in the play area at the same time anyway, because they're grouped off in age groups. So my current um, facility, I have, I'm, I'm licensed for 20, I'm licensed for 17. My yard space is licensed for 21. However, I don't put the one-year-olds or the two-year-olds with the 
10 and 11 year olds because they just can't play in the same space. Um, it, 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 you can't force that to happen. Right. So even if that space, um, which is a typo, um, Mr. McBride told me the correct number for it, um, it wouldn't be 57 children all out at once playing at one time in that right, area. Right. Because I still have regulations that I have to do. I'm sorry for cutting you off. You're good. I, I still have. I still have. Good. <laughs> work with <I> breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I still have regulations, not just from you guys, but I also have a whole nother entity that is the state of Georgia, which represented by Bright from the start. So what normally happens is once I go through you guys and the fire marshal, which is Brian, then the state comes in and they add on multiple multiple things of tasks that I have to do before I can even open. So it's just not an overnight process. So they go in, and what they see that you guys may have missed, they make me do. They're pretty stringent. Yes, they are. And then they also visit this facility and the site. I have to produce site plans and physical, and physical plans for the inside of the building as well. So the site plan has to go through all their regulations plus you guys. And um, once they do that, then they'll say, well, you need to add this space. Can't, you need this size fence, you need this much land, you need to add or improve. And if you don't do it, then this is what you need to do. So it's just not, um, as I say, it's just no disrespect for you guys. It's just not you guys. You guys are important, but they are the ones that come in. I'm and very my, well aware. Yeah. I know where I am. <laughs> yeah. 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 Tell me you have other questions. I have a concern, and I think maybe the Planning Commission had the same concern with the, with the traffic and where the road uh, with the improvements it's going to be about, about six lanes in front of the, the house that's closest to Columbia Road uh, the the crosswalk going to the school coming from the neighborhood is, is right in front of there and uh, uh, a right out only coming out of Braddock and can you address some of those? I can, because that was this question that you guys, not you guys, but the other gentleman had approached me. Yes. So the plan for my drop-off schedule is, is this, I have typed up a letter for my parents that they must know in their parent handbook. So the drop-off, we open at 7 a.m. The school block-off time is 7.45 to 8.45. So the parent has 45 minutes until the time to drop off their children in the designated hour if they happen to get stuck and said so area that they're at the daycare or they can't get back on the street, they have to wait that block of time before they can enter back out into the, into the street. They are cognitive of this. The other, the other choice is they could park where the elementary school students' parents park, which is Brookwood or the side of Brookwood, and use that easeway or that walking path um, for their children. I'm not aiming to, to, to serve children at, at six weeks to um, one year olds. I'm doing toddlers that can walk a two minute walk to a daycare facility with their parents and back and the parents can walk back. It is, it is particularly up to the parents whether they wanna use that, use either one of those methods. So you'll have how many employees at a time? And, and, and I rode by there today to try and look, pull in the, drive, pull in the back, and, you know, just trying to get, get wrap my head around it, whatever and all. Mm -hmm. So you'll have how many employees working at a time, and where will they park? And then if you have 50 kids, that's 50 cars. And they won't be all at one time. I understand that. They'll be, they'll be scattered out. But are, are they going to be able to get on the lot with, with your employees, four, five, or six, or however many you're going to have? Uh, yes, because the space that Mr. McBride allows me to use is shared space. So he owns one. He owns two properties that sits right. on that building. I'm not just restricted to that one lot. I have, I have parking spaces on both sides, and then it's also the option to add more parking spaces on the other lot as well. So, um, and as far as the employee parking, it is um, right at the side entrance of the building. You, you're looking where I'm the, where that white car is parked right now. Yes, that is the employees. That looks like what maybe two, three cars could fit there. So how many employees would you have at a time? That was another question that they asked me. 
Um, it all depends on num numbers and capacity that I have at the time. So if I don't have 57 children, I'm not going to need seven employees. So it, it, it fluctuates. So I couldn't give a definite answer on that. But for right now, I only have three employees that I have previously that will go to this building. And also, if I, if I see the need to add, or they could use the other uh, parking spaces that are right here. There are parking spaces that sit right here under these trees. And then there are um, parking spaces on, by underneath this tree as well, I think. Ma'am, maybe we could go at another way. Uh, what ratio does the state require you to have in staff to children? Um, it is one, um, one to one to ten year olds. I have it written down. Okay. I have it written down. So you'll have multiple age groups there with at least I'll one. To, I'll have ages two to twelve there. Okay. Preferably, I don't. I. No disrespect to the 12 year olds, but I don't want the 12 year olds there, but I can't turn them away um, at that point. But preferably ages two to um, eight or nine. Um, maybe kids that attend that school and the parents are not able to get them at a certain time, the parents can utilize that facility and um, don't have to worry about getting off work early, um, have daycare, pick the child up. Also, the parents that don't have the typical nine to five as well. Thank you. So for 57 children, that would be both houses or one, one house? You, using one facility or both facilities? One facility for now. That's 57? Yes, children? sir, it is. How big over is the 2, 000, house? It's, it's, 2, 000, it's over 2,000 square feet, and Bright for the Scar requires us to have 35 square foot per child. Okay, so Mr. McBride would probably still be trying to do something with his other house, and if, if, if somebody goes in there for office or whatever, that's going to take the parking over there that you were probably talking about using some of, so. And then I am, I am prepared to, to make this spot right here more parking. There's nothing there but land. Of course, hopefully, Mr. McBride hasn't paid for it, but I am <laughs> at this point. It's his property. It's benefiting him by me being there, honestly. Are you closing your other location? Is that you moving to, you have moved oh, to? Okay. I, I rode by your other location. Oh, they just happened. Don't tell the sheriff's department I was cutting the red light and going through there or mm -hmm. whatever, but. You're on tape, but this is Ruby. No, y'all, I mean, business was good. I mean, you know, good. I'm, I'm happy for you. Thank you. I love what I do, and it's my passion. I can't see myself doing anything else. I used to take care of the elderly. I did surgical technician, and I also did phlebotomy tech. So surgery was itchy hockey sticks. I don't want to say that on the record. Um, the elderly, they are abusive to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it for 13 years. Um, I was raised by my grandparents, so I have that natural love for older adults, and I love their stories. But my passion has always been um, child care. I played child care in my backyard. I did four years in high school for child care. I even went to college for it at, at Egan Tech. And I don't know everything, but I don't mind learning. And whatever you guys have asked me in the past, I've done it with no questions asked. Ask Mr. Bryan that. Sure on the list. That's what it's your list. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Tommy McBride. I've been a resident of Columbia County now for about 35 years. Been in real estate <laughs> 52 years. So uh, I've had quite a bit of opportunity to do a lot of things. And one of the, I guess, most uh, comforting things I've done is trying to get this property suitable for something good for the county many years it was used for personal care homes because of covid the personal care homes are suffering 
folks that have been running them just keep clients because people are having in-home care. So properties are vacant. Uh, as this Ray came along and wanted to do child care, I said, hey, that's the thing to do. So uh, it didn't bother me about traffic, but road widening. I don't even, I wrote all of you, I, I don't even think the, the side road should be kept for being closed. They're putting in a sidewalk on that uh, road that was never there before. Up there, making the, the six-lane road and all these things. Uh, so access shouldn't be a problem. But I went ahead and called Mr. Uh, Sale, asked him to do a study, and he did. I have a copy of it. He says that the number of cars that would be extra trips that would be created there is not. Uh, I want to get back to the parking, though. There's actually room to park seven cars. Uh, that driveway is wide enough. That three cars can park easily. There's still room behind them to park three more. And the white uh, top on the rear of the, the building is a covered carport. So you can park a car into there. I realize that would create shifting around in case folks leaving. But it could work. And that's, that's this area here. Uh, so you could get seven cars there very easily. The, the spaces in the back could be expanded. Don't mind doing that. As far as play area goes, you've got 34, 38,000 square feet on that lot, counting the two of them. So any of this area back in here could be developed. I don't care play area. That's just something that as it comes up, we'll take care of. But uh, we have an, uh, an agreement with the county. Uh, one of the things uh, that we are getting is a 20-foot driveway from Flowing Wells Road so that you have uh, cars passing. Uh, even if width of the driveway isn't really 20 feet, there's still going to be access to have a parking area there. Uh, under the present zoning, uh, I think you'll see that uh, we could have a library, a doctor's offices, or a number of things that might create more traffic and the good thing about the daycare is it's only a drop off and pick up. Uh, it is 2,025 square feet, and that's where the number 57 comes from. Could have a maximum of 57 children at the 35 feet per uh, square, uh, square feet per child for the um, But your intent is to to use both buildings for, for something. Oh, yes, yes. And the second building, sorry. It's uh, to the right of this? This this building here. Oh, there's that's, one. Oh, yeah, I can't even see it. Another. That's a darker oh, roof. It's a little right. hard to see. On your traffic study that was done, did it, it take into consideration the traffic at the school? Uh, Martinez Elementary has a program after school where the kids could stay to six o'clock. Happens to be one of the busiest programs that they have in the whole county. Wondering if Mr. Casale took, took that into consideration. I think he did. And the, the, the other thing he took into consideration is when he started closing the road, it did not have a sidewalk, and it also the old school did not have much drop-off space. When that building was torn down, the school was moved back, and then they put in extra. I mean, society has changed. More people are taking their children to school. Now there are adequate lanes for dropping off and parking at the school. It wasn't there before. I just knew that would create a lot of traffic around the 6 o'clock time. But he says that up. it would be minimal compared for that particular area. Questions, comments? No, sir. Sir. Do we have a motion? Do you want to make a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I make a motion to uh, disapprove the request for conditional use for a daycare from tax map 078C005. Second. Discussion or question? Discussion-wise, I just I, I think uh, I admire what you do for us in the county. 
but I've just, uh, traffic-wise, I think this creates a problem for the road. The motion is second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next, to me, uh, file uh, RZ two one zero six zero three. I make a motion to disapprove the request for a rezoning from M one to TR for a property located at tax map zero seven four parcel one seventeen. Second, Matt. So this is currently zoned M one for light industrial. They're looking to go to a townhome residential. This plan that was. Shown here is showing developing the 9.83 acres. Um, their density would be locked at 78 units, I believe is the number. However, the concept plan that is shown does not meet all of our requirements, so this is not what this development would look like. Um, but it would be capped at, at 78 units, I believe. 78 is the right number. So currently M1, so you're looking at office warehouse, car dealer, or car mechanic type stuff. They're looking to change to townhome residential. Well, this was rezoned like a year ago to M1, right? It hadn't been long ago, yes, sir. I forget the exact time. 2020. Was there any kind of site plan submitted during that? There period? was a, a layout. I believe it showed eight uh, office warehouse spaces on this, on the previous site plan. When uh, is Wrightsboro Road supposed to be uh, approved or whatever? I know it didn't make next T. <clears throat> Great, did not make this current T. We have some resurfacing money just to resurface the price per row, but as far as widening, uh, we've looked at it through the MPO. Um, of course, that money's spoken for for 10 years out. The TIA money is spoken for for the next 10 years out, so we won't even start working on design for 10 years minimum, so probably 20 years before you see the actual widening of Riceboro Road. That's a new funding source coming. All in favor, raise your right hand. Item uh, VA 210601. Uh, I make a motion to approve the request for a variance to section 90 53 list of lot and structure requirements for property located at tax map 082K, parcel 115, to setbacks to six feet along the northern border line and four feet along the eastern property line, limited to the submitted plans for a proposed retaining wall, subject to the conditions enumerated in the June 3rd, 2021 Planning Commission report. Second. Here you have a homeowner that lives, uh, backs up to a pond. This area here is a, a pond. We do have a drainage easement on the rear of this property. They are looking to install a retaining wall here to uh, expand their use of their backyard. They have a pool already, um, golf cart path. Um, one of the conditions does require them to get an encroachment agreement with us to build in our easement. So if this variance is approved, we'll move forward with getting that encroachment agreement back in front of you to approve that as well. So we'll see this again if you vote in favor of this tonight. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Please. Item uh, B4, VA uh, 210602. I make a motion to approve the request for a variance of section 90-135 signs for the property located at tax map 029 parcel 024R to increase the allowed square footage of the wall sub sign subject to the condition enumerated in the June 3rd, 2021 Planning Commission report. Second. This is the Amazon Building 1 that's under current construction, about 2.5 million square feet and their signs Big as that building is, they have one sign that exceeds our sign ordinance by about 130 square feet. It's the mile logo that goes above their employee entrance. Uh, in scale with the building, it's it's minimal compared to the actual mass of the building. There's a. It's going to be on the inside of the. Faces interior to the industrial park. It does not face I-20. Questions? Raise your right hand. Next uh, item is. Folks have asked to speak, Mr. Arish Amin. <clears throat> Sorry if you just 
State your name and address of the record, please. My name is Harish Amin, and resident of Columbia County for more than 35 years. And I'm here to request a variance for the medical license. About six months of time from the license issue to open up business. But this is going to be a brand new facility built from ground up. And that six month time is not enough. So we're requesting three months time variance. Started your engineering yet? I'm sorry. Have you started your engineering uh, we, yet? We did because the problem with this site is one side we have Georgia Power line going, and other side we found from the first pre review we had with the planning department. If they said that there is a 24 inch water line is going. Now they have to give us they have to give us a mapping exactly where it is because at that time they didn't have they're working on that to provide us that mapping. But our pad and everything is shown, and we had a first meeting, that's where we stand right now. Questions? And then there's also another person who asked to speak. Bill? Yes, sir. Pranav Patel, 730 Mars Point, Evans, Georgia. I had a concern about the liquor license apply near Walgreen. Um, I called the Columbia County on June 2nd, happened to find out they have applied for the license. I tried by there on June 3rd to see if there is a proper signage. Since that's an alcohol license, there has to be a sign, someone who applied for the license. But there was no sign anywhere on the property. I've been taking pictures since that day on till today. I went by the neighbor on the back, talked to a few people, and no one have any idea that anyone have applied for the liquor license on the front end. Everybody knew about the rezoning on the that was the lock road. There is no no signage or no paper that somebody have applied for the liquor license on their property. I just want to address that. Yeah, yeah. I see you may have sent an email asking that. I question. did, sir. I was actually late to send the email. I did send the email earlier, but the attachment was so big that it come back to me, and I didn't realize until, until it was too late. Yep. Matt? Oh. Yes, sir. The, uh, current, the county code requires the sign to be displayed a minimum of 30 days prior to commission hearing the, the request. Uh, the sign was issued on April 12th, and I have a sign. I have a picture here of the sign on the site on April the 14th. So to meet our code, it would have to have stayed there until, we'll say May 14th. So by June Not 3rd, vote, it's the code says it must be displayed at least 30 days prior to. It doesn't say it has to remain in place throughout the vote. It just says 30 days prior to, a minimum of 30 days prior to. Do we check that more than one time? I mean, are we just... Yeah. We just snapped the shot one she time. Has, she went out and verified. I also have from the uh, from the applicant, I have pictures he sent in. I'm not sure. Let me get to this. I didn't see this send me a picture. I didn't look that picture up. So that's why I went by on the second day, looked for their sign, but it wasn't there. 30 days would have long been passed for that, wouldn't it? May 14th. It would have to be there past May 14th. Correct. So on, the, on the second, the June 2nd, if you think June 6th is when you said you first went? Uh -huh. So by then the 30 days had passed. So it has been passed, okay. I wasn't sure about that one, okay. Right, again, I'm not saying I saw the sign out there. I'm telling I you I have evidence it was there on April 14th. So it would only have to be there through 30 days from the 14th. Correct. Comments? Is there a motion? Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the alcoholic beverage license for Manship Enterprise, LLC, DBA Liquor Market, and deny the request of the variance to Section 6-56, automatic forfeiture for non-use. I second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Uh, 
uh, item uh, B6. Uh, I make a motion to approve the resolution number 21-28, adoption of the Vision 2035 Comprehensive Plan Update. I want to second. Oh, I'll second it. <laughs> Thank you. All righty. Mr. Sterling and his staff have worked for a year and a half on this uh. tirelessly. <laughs> he really appreciates your support. <laughs> did we? Did we get? Quicker next time, if you don't mind. <laughs> did we uh, get the community? Actually, we have some community volunteers. Yeah, yeah, the, and we appreciate y'all serving Mike. And you mind on standing that. up and telling us your name? You served on the committee for. Uh, there was a, a, a really large group of people who worked together to hash through what their perception of where our community should be and what, how we should grow and tell these folks a debt because there are a lot of meetings and negotiation back and forth and, and I just appreciate it. Thank you very much. There was a letter that came out. Did, did all, all that get straightened out? Yeah. We're yeah. good. We got a... We, Submitted the uh, plan to the regional commission right. and to the Department of Community Affairs for their review, approval, if you will, and we did receive a couple of um, comments, but nothing that required updates and changes uh, to the document itself. So it came back clean. We just had a couple of suggestions for the next one in five years. Okay. Thank you. There's a motion to second on the floor, although it was a slow second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Mr. Chairman, if I could also add that just how much we appreciate our partners at GMC. I know Courtney's here, worked really hard on the project um, and how well they work with us through that entire process. This is a comprehensive plan and uh, just wanted to make sure that we recognize GMC for their hard work as well. On to you, Vice Chairman Richardson. I make a motion to appoint Mike Carraway to the Planning Commission to Fill the term of Richard Henderson, effective July 1st. Second. Yes, he had some personal issues that, in his life that came up, and he just, uh, he tried his best, but he couldn't meet all the obligations. So I appreciate his service. He did serve there for five years. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Please. Make a motion to approve the intergovernmental agreement to purchase water distribution and wastewater collection system from the City of Harlem, effective July 1st, 2021. Second. Mr. Johnson, you want to? Yes, Mr. Chairman. This has been a long process. We've been working with the City of Harlem on their water rates and also on their wastewater discharge for some time. Uh, as a result of the meetings and all the work that's been done, the city of Harlem did reduce their rates. It was going to be effective July the 1st, but it became apparent that it might be in the best interest of all the citizens of the Harlem area and of Columbia County if Columbia County were to purchase that system. Uh, so what you have before you today for consideration is the purchase of the entire system, meaning that the Columbia County Water Utility uh, would take over all operations of the water utility in the city of Harlem uh, and outside the city of Harlem. Everybody that's being serviced by that system currently um, it would mean that uh, the rates, the current rates for all of those citizens inside the city and outside the city would be matched to the, the current county rate, uh, which is going to be a rate reduction for all of those citizens there. Uh, there are some wastewater concerns that we have in place, and we are going to have to make significant investments going forward. The city of Harlem was in the process of doing that, but found that it was economically unfeasible for the city to be able to add enough wastewater capacity to be able to handle their growth. Uh, so just due to the economy of scale, we think we're going to be able to do, do that. Um, we are going to have to make a significant investment. I do want to thank uh, all the members of the board that worked on this, our legal counsel that worked on this, uh, and then also our new water utility director, Stacy Gordon, and his staff has worked diligently uh, trying to make sure that we can pull this off. I have no doubt that we'll be able to run that system effectively and efficiently. 
And then last but not least, all the folks in the city of Harlem that, that realize that this is going to be good for all the citizens inside and outside the city. Uh, so this is a, a permanent move, uh, and it gets all the folks that were on the old Harlem water system will now be Columbia County Water Utility customers. And this is not from the tax base. This is a no. This is a utility. This is a utility. Um, this is an enterprise fund. So uh, this is not. Nobody's taxes are going up as a result of this. It is supported by the fund. Uh, we are very, very uh, fortunate under Mr. Clayton's leadership to have a strong fund balance in the water utility. So uh, we're going to be able to purchase the system with that fund balance, and then we'll look for future funding options to be able to expand the system as necessary. And uh, we do have some some options available to us, and we'll be identifying those and bringing those to you at a later, at a later date. No taxes involved. I want to compliment the mayor and her staff, or better yet, the, the council of Harlem, because as they got into the planning of the expansion of their system, it became evident that they, the growth would outstrip what they were trying to do before they even got there. And it would have been very expensive ratepayers in Harlem and the citizens they provide so this is a real win for the citizens and one other thing that I would add Mr. Chairman I appreciate you bringing that up that, that there were a lot of discussions a lot of people were concerned about the city of Harlem, Harlem not meeting all their service delivery needs and, and not keeping their charter they will very much keep their charter they will very much continue to be a city they will provide public works they provide police they provide fire so all those functions will still occur in the city uh, but you're right. It, it was just economically unfeasible for them to be able to to handle uh, this without really raising the water rates to the point that the citizens weren't going to be able to afford it. No, at, at the risk of repeating uh, for the folks at home, thousands of people are now going to have their rates reduced in the Harlem city well, over 2,000 people and outside. Yes. So uh, my thanks to you for uh, managing this and. Uh, thanks to the people of Harlem, the city government of Harlem, for their cooperation and giving all those people a new day. It can affect a lot of households. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Motion, second. All in favor, raise <laughs> Chairman Richardson, I think we have one more executive. Well, hold on. Legal matters. Legal matters that we can talk about. No legal matters we can talk about. <laughs> or should talk about. We should talk about, yeah. Public comments. Public here. Thank you. Okay, we have an executive session. One item, gentlemen. Right here, right now. Sir, I make a motion to approve thirteen thousand six hundred dollars, Grove Town Industrial LLC, parcel zero six nine zero zero one I, for right of way permanent and temporary easements, Rising South Parkway Road widening project. Second. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Anything else? Is there any other motions that need to be made? Mr. Chairman, I motion that we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. <laughs> you were quick with that one. Home. Thank you.